Hello everyone, and welcome back to another episode of Hermitcraft. Yes, we are gently drifting towards the tower that we have constructed in our recent episode to Hermitcraft. And this tower is centered around our villager breeder that I originally had plans for, and then those plans got scrapped. So I dropped them all the way down into the water streams at the bottom. However, one of them managed to land on the side and so I had to nudge them in, right? And now they live under the ground, under where this water stream is. That's it. If we've ever got plans for them again, they'll be there for us to go and grab. But as of right now, they're just going to live in a cave. So anyway, we can now build the farm that we want to build inside of this tower. It's going to be built around the center of it, which is why we needed to get those villagers out of there. And if you didn't catch the end of the last episode, I'd highly recommend going back and checking out the really cool redstone engineering that we did in that. Because in this episode, we are going to be building that redstone and putting this farm to use. And one of the things that it needs is a way to get up the middle of it. So we constructed this minecart elevator system where you can hop between each of the minecarts to get from the bottom all the way up to the top. So down at the bottom of this glorious construct, we have water streams. These are going to push all the items that fall in here to the center. And I kind of realized, yes, maybe the cocoa beans could land on the edge of the jungle trapdoors. I'm not worried about that because the redstone we have designed is so amazing. And I've actually built it already. There is a slight problem. When you're moving up like this, you might accidentally then go and click on the button. So not sure what I'm going to do about that. Anyway, the redstone's all here, I've tested it, it's working, and then I had a thought, what if this works differently in multiplayer? Okay, so I brought 20 water buckets to fill up the 20 dispensers, and now we can give it a test. Okay, I just pressed the button. Oh, and I see, where is it? It's happening. Yes! It's totally working! Okay, it works the same. Oh, that's so amazing. So amazing. The water streams are going to go a bit mad down the bottom here, but eventually they'll reset themselves. Look at that. That actually just looks cool as a thing, right? It's almost like a decoration. Imagine if this was just a, a stairwell leading upwards and the water continuously dropped down in a circle. That would be a pretty fancy thing to have in your base. And yes, I am going to replace that one stripped log. I mean, I placed all of these and I only stripped one of them. I think that's pretty good. The next step will be cocoa beans. Going to plant loads of them and I've got no idea how many of them I have stashed up. But they'll be over here with our dyes. Yeah, there you go. Quite a few to get started. And I also want to calculate how many spaces we have for these cocoa beans first as well. This thing supports 960 slots, which is 15 stacks. And we have like 13 plus 47. So if I go fish around for some more of these, we'll be able to fill it up from top to bottom. Okay, I had to pinch a few from my neighbor Corrala, so must not forget to return them later, right? So we're going to plant all of these, do a full harvest, all of that cool stuff. So how long does it take to place all of these cocoa beans on the jungle wood? It was about six and a half minutes from a bottom to top. And then I decided to leave the replay mod on, actually recording the growth of all of the cocoa beans. It took about 30 minutes until pretty much all of them had grown. So this farm is actually pretty fast if you consider that you leave it there for 30 minutes and all the cocoa beans are fully grown. And now, of course, it means we get to harvest all of these beauties. So let's go ahead and press the button. And I actually think F5 is the way to observe what's going on here. Look at that. Look at that absolutely glorious harvesting of cocoa beans. Wow. Okay, I want to jump down and see it from down below as well. Oh, this is amazing. This is amazing right here. And now it's all getting collected. Bear in mind, these hoppers might get a little bit overfilled. Because there's a lot of stuff coming down here. I'm picking up a lot of it as well. And we're probably going to see... Yeah, some of the cocoa beans get caught on these trapdoors. If I really want to make sure I get every single one of them... And I've got to hop over here, hold down right click, and we'll pick up the rest. So to deal with the hoppers, I think what we're going to do is put a second bunch of them down below. So these ones can pull from the ones above. And then that way, they kind of get down here just a little bit quicker. Or at least there's more capacity to store them all. Oh, and by the way, replanting this stuff is pretty straightforward, as you can see right here. The only thing is the furthest blocks away, if you aim in the top corner, you can't reach it. If you come in a little bit, you can, and so it's easy to place all of these. I find it's best to just do one wall at a time. And so we need a little storage and entrance area, and I decided to combine the two things that became rather obvious to me. First of all, the use of brown blocks around the edges here, pretty quite nice. 
And I've got a little tip to share with you when it comes to detailing this stuff. The second thing is the bone blocks that were already here. <laughs> it's like we're going into a fragmented bone. Everything looks really cool. In fact, the scaffolding here is kind of in the way. You know, it's in the way of the storage and it breaks up the view of the room. But there you go. And the amount of time I spent working on that probably means that this thing up here... Yeah, look at that. It's ready again for another harvest. And it would be criminal for us not to enjoy this one more time. So I'm pressing the button. <laughs> The view of that from here is pretty cool, and the view from down here, absolutely amazing as well. I love watching this thing in action, it is so cool. Also down here as well, you'll notice that I've doubled the amount of hoppers, or probably even more than that, so it should have no problem collecting all of the items. Oh, and the tip that I mentioned a moment ago is being able to stand in front of a whole bunch of different options like this. I came over here, and then I just realised, hang on a minute. There's loads of different types of things that I can plant down here for detail. So idea for you, your storage, get a wall of item frames for things that go well together for a particular task. And then when you pop over here, you don't have to remember them. They're all just on site for you to grab whatever it is that you need. And we are not done with that tower just yet. We're going to be putting yet another farm inside of it. So it's going to be a combo tower. But first of all, I need to make use of these slabs and modify something we did a couple of episodes back. And I am talking about the Beatralis wings. The more I fly past this thing, the more it just doesn't quite work. And so as many of you pointed out, there are compromises between full blocks and carpets. We can go with slabs, which is half a block. Or I could put on snow layers, and I'm not sure if you can actually place them on top of string or not. Hey, look at this. I think I'm just going to leave the string there. <laughs> I was going to remove it, but it just makes the placing this easier. And I'll tell you what, my friends, that's ten times better. That is the difference that we were looking for. And look at this. I found another tactical tickle. Get out of here. <laughs> so, my friends, we are back in the testing world where we designed the cocoa bean farm. And what I want to combine this with is a cactus farm. And if I go and pop off this string, you'll see that I've sped up the game so that we can watch this thing growing and see where all the items end up over time. And immediately you can see that items are getting caught on these cobblestone walls. Now a long time ago I made an episode of myth busting on cactus farm efficiency and what I learned is that these walls around the top area here will stop the cactus drops from going too far over to the side. So for example if we remove this in the middle it means that the cactus can pop off and then land on another cactus over here. Now what I want to do is just take that principle and adapt it to the area outside of our cocoa bean farm. And as you can see right here, it looks like the items are actually landing on the cobblestone walls down below. And the solution is actually to double them up. So they hit the edge of the cobblestone wall at the top here, and then they fall downwards. But it seems sometimes with enough momentum to land on top of here. So now we've got to wait and see what happens when these are too tall. As you can see with this modification, they still seem to land on there. However, what I would notice is that they're landing over the far edge where the hitbox of the cobblestone wall is slightly bigger. And we can actually put blocks here where they land. And with the setup like this, it's very rare that they get caught on those ledges, which means that most of the drops are then heading all the way down to the bottom, which is what we want because, you know, when you build a farm, you try and make it as lossless as possible. And just in case there is some confusion about the floating sand here, I'm actually using string. So that's going to be a part of our farm design. We put the string down like that, and then that means that we can have the sand floating on top of it. Oh, and speaking of string, I had a lot of suggestions to replace the wall with snow layers, which of course you can stack up and then you've got like a custom height that you can create for the wings. Problem is, you can't place it on top of string, unfortunately. So the slabs will have to do, and do you know what? They look fantastic. I think we've got the right solution there. Now let's go ahead and turn our attention to the mega project. What you're going to notice is that it looks fairly complete. And that's because it is, although only as far as I've designed it. So I haven't designed a roof. I haven't designed any of the interiors beyond what you see right here. So this is it for now. This is the mega project, a huge space cleared out. And oh, it took me some hours of grinding, but I placed all of those blocks and now it looks glorious. And I feel like we should appreciate the view one more time as we approach from over here. There is going to be so much more work to do on this project. We are far from finished, but that first part of it is indeed finished. 
And now I guess we can turn our attention back to this tower because we're going to put another farm inside of it. And that farm, my friends, is going to be a cactus farm. If we pay attention to the water basin down the bottom here, you'll notice there's a gap and the water is actually flowing from further behind. So if we pop through here, yeah, you can see where all the water is. Now the problem is we need a free wide space for our cactus farm. And as you'll see here, the space between this wall and that one is two. But at this level, it can be free. So cactus can be falling down onto these blocks. So we do need like a secondary water thing to just nudge them down into the water down below. And then if we fill in some of the gaps on the side of these walls, we can basically have a cactus farm tucked in this space between the cocoa bean and the outside area going really high up, which would allow us to put quite a bit of cactus into this area. So I think we've got this. We have signs below to hold up the water. And then I haven't done the same thing on the opposite side because we need the cactus to fall out of the water down to what's below. So these are one level up. And with this, it should mean we're able to put one water source on each side. Not that I need to be efficient or anything, but wherever the water goes, it will fall into the stream below. Wherever the water goes, I mean where wherever the cactus lands in the water, right? That makes sense. So yeah, that's going to be the bottom of the cactus farm. Now what we got to do is build up some walls because what's going to happen is the cactus will pop off and it will hit the walls over here. It'll hit the walls on this side. And so now we're going to go and fill up this space right here all the way to the very top with some stone bricks. And also some glowstone because, you know, then it's all luminous and I can see what I'm doing when I, when I build this. You might notice that side over there, the glowstone's higher up. Yeah, I made a mistake counting along the way here, and you know what? I don't care. It's fine. It doesn't all have to be neat and perfect. Plus, we're probably never going to see the inside of this place again. So to get started, I did some calculations. We need 240 cactus, sand, and string, and 3,600 of those stone brick walls. That might be a little tricky. Anyway, I started building and found the replay mod Kind of a bit of a pain to move around in this cramped and small space. So I've built up one side at a time as that's obviously a lot easier to edit with the replay mod. But I think I don't really need to time lapse the rest, right? You get the point. You can see how I'm placing it all down. And we've just done a quarter now and that took me about half an hour. So still a fair bit of a ways to go. So here we are, 90 minutes later. <laughs> it's all been a days of block placing and swiveling around and... Doing the same thing over and over again, and there you go, you know, we've stacked two farms together, it's a pretty fun project, and I almost forgot this, but we need to return some cocoa beans to Corallus. And on my short travels over here, I have thought of something rather hilarious, yeah, okay. <laughs> First of all, let's plop some cocoa beans back from where I pinched them from Corallus. Admire the view of his wonderful base with falling zombies and head back towards our beautiful tower which I can now say is complete. However what's hilarious is that this thing actually has kind of a fatal flaw. The cactus that collects in here is passive which basically means it's going to accumulate over time and knowing me I'm not going to need cocoa beans for a very long time. And so when I come over here to use the farm, there's a good chance that all of this will be filled up with cactus and all of the hoppers and droppers behind it leading up to the top, which will make it a real pain to collect the cocoa beans. But do you know what? I don't care. It's, it's just been a fun and interesting project. And now that I think about it, in combination with our flower farm and our miniature flower farms here inside of the base, I believe we're farming all types of dye. Yeah, I'm not sure if all the dyes are in here, but a quick scratch of the head suggests, yes, we have got farms for every color of dye now. Except the ones that are combined, like lime, for example, although there is probably something like sea pickles, right? That makes lime, I think. And now I have actually traveled all the way over to Toon Towers, to the coral reef next door, to grab a tiny bit of sea pickle. I guess this is a farm we haven't made yet. And so from these three, we shall forge a sea pickle farm in the future. No? Of course, of course, you have to smelt it. Does my memory serve me well? Yes, that's how you get lime. And yes, I know that you can use cactus and bone meal. That was not the point that I was trying to make. But anyway, we're going to leave the area now and head over to one of my favorite places on Hermitcraft, which is Cubfan's base. 
Well, my totem of undying just got used up. There was a piglin stuck inside the portal. And when in the portal block, you can't actually hit them back. So, uh, it really is a lifesaver, right? I need to remember to go buy another one, though, after. This place, oh, it's absolutely glorious. And I don't even know how to get to where we need to go. I think we go through one of these corridors down here. Is it this one? There are some beautiful sights to behold in this place. I love this custom biome, the combination of blocks here with the granite and the basalt. Absolutely brilliant. And then these pieces of art on the wall. <laughs> Fantastic. I think we're actually supposed to go to the other side because Cup has his own like mini games area for the target block. And if we turn around, yep, there it is. Target. A shot above the rest. Or should I say, Target. I believe that's the way Cub Fan wants it pronounced. Anyway, he's built a selection of mini games around here, revolving around the target block. And I've come over here to play one of them because the prize is a creeper head. That is what I am after, my friends. A rare and coveted creeper head. Win this creeper head by winning the one stack contest ends August the 9th. The only other player is Cub Fan at the moment, so if we can beat stage 3, that means that this could be ours. So it takes a few minutes to play and we take in a stack of arrows with a crossbow or a bow. And we have to reach the highest level in open sesame. This means that we need to make a sequence of perfect bullseye shots, I believe. And so yes, we are only using 64 arrows. So we need to make four perfect shots for 64 arrows. And that's about it, I guess. Here's a fun fact for you. These are the last of my own arrows. I actually haven't collected any arrows from our skeleton farm in a long time since we added the bone filter, so I kind of need to stock up on some of my own. Luckily, Cub's got some for you here, and I think we're supposed to use this. I'm not going to use my own bow, just in case the enchantments here get in the way, like flame might be an issue. And I'm not going to use the crossbow because I never really use the crossbow. I haven't had as much experience with it. So it is actually this lectern right here, the rules book, that is also the way you set up the difficulty. So we put it on page 15, and now it requires perfect bullseyes. So I had to go watch Cub Fan's episode to reacquaint myself of how this game works because I probably would have just started off going in the wrong direction, facing the same way. So the book is set up, we right click on the note block and this actually sets off a timer, but we're playing the untimed mode. And this right here is the target block that we need to get bullseye on and we go further back each time we hit one of these. So I think you're supposed to stand on this, although you could kind of like go all the way forward. I'm just going to stand roughly in the middle of here and uh, hope for a bullseye. So that's a little bit low. And hey, we got one with two shots. Okay, good start. So then we step back. No, is that not how it works? Okay, it opens up like that. I thought this door would open. So, right, I can take my time with this. I can take my time. Oh, he shoots. He scores. Okay, well, this time we're going to aim a little bit higher. Try and get it nice and central there. And no idea where that landed. I think we've got to aim higher though. Oh, we got another one. Right, what did I say? I've just gotta get I've just gotta get one more bullseye and we're in the lead. Oh please. Please, computer game, let me win. Okay, I'm gonna aim quite high this time. Look at that. You can see we're we're not quite getting it. Yeah, okay. I'll keep shooting. Wow, one of these shots was unbelievably close. I think randomness really comes into play the further away from the target block you are. So this is like probably the, the luck shot. You just need an incredible amount of luck to get this to land. Hey, hey, I did it. Oh, I was just here peppering off shot after shot thinking, oh man, you know, that that's probably it. Well, now the question is, can we get one more? Probably not. Do you know what I'm going to do? I'm going to go clear the board so we can take a shot and see where it lands. So let's aim at the middle of that lantern up there. And I'm not going to fuss too much. Oh, okay. I can clearly see it's too high. So let's go between the two. Okay. And then we'd have to come down a little bit lower. So it's probably actually about right in the middle of that lantern. And as I was trying to say, I'm not going to fuss over this too much at all. Oh my god, that was unbelievably close. <laughs> okay, well, aiming for the middle of the lantern with our last six shots is the name of the game now. 
Okay, so that was my last shot. Game is over, and we kind of got close. Look. Look at that. We got very close. Oh, boy. Okay, if we'd have got the one before sooner, then we might have had some more luck. Anyway, that was, that was extraordinary. I really enjoyed that. And over here, I get to put down a sign. We got to stage four. Actually, we, we got to stage five. So I'm not sure if I'm supposed to write four because we beat this stage or five. I'll just drop Cub a message and let him know exactly what happened. This is correct right here. We got stage five. Fantastic. We are in the lead. And maybe this creeper head, just maybe it will become mine. And by the way, I have some news regarding the standoff tournament that I have been hosting. Okay, there was a game between ZF and Cubfan, and this is your opportunity to go check out their videos if you want to see the match without spoilers. But if you're not going to be checking it out, I'm going to tell you the result right now, okay? So Cubfan beat ZF, and he will be facing either Full Symmetry or Efo in the next round. And we must not forget to restock our totems. There we go. I only needed one, but I thought I'd get a few extra as well. And now that we're back at the base, I did also just want to comment and say thanks for all the feedback. We had to pick between gold and honey blocks over here. And the honeycomb blocks, they won out. And so here they are. I had tons and tons of comments about that. So thank you everyone for letting me know what you thought. Aha! It is now night time, and I like night time in this area because of how the paths down here get illuminated. They are fantastic. And speaking of paths, I have some plans to expand them further. I've been thinking about the path that's going to connect from over here over to this area where our new tower is and the smeltery. And then we're probably going to be setting up a couple of towers with farms inside of them. That is no surprise, but it's going to be a fun one for reasons that I shall not reveal yet. But I'm hoping in between episodes I can work on designing some more towers. And I really enjoyed filling that one up with two farms in a rather peculiar way, I guess you could say. So yeah, it's been another fun one and we've got more fun ones ahead of us. If you enjoyed today's episode of Hermitcraft, be sure to leave a like to support this series. Thank you for doing that. And I will catch you soon with another episode of Hermitcraft. So ciao for now. Bye bye.